I'm in Madison, Indiana, outside of the Lanier Mansion State Historic Site, and I am using a new camera. This is a Canon T7i. Um, it is so good, like, the quality of this is so good. So I'm very excited to start using this for my videos now. And um, this house is very interesting. It belonged to James F.D. Lanier, who was a very wealthy banker, as you can tell, because that's a big house. And it's right along the Ohio River, and um, I'm gonna head inside. This is a way bigger camera than I'm used to. And uh, sorry if it's a little shaky right now. The home is a National Historic Landmark, which is the top designation for a historic place in the country. Pretty impressive, but not quite like the other side, which I'm about to show you. Clearly this side facing the river was meant to be impressive and commanding, and to show off the wealth of Lanier and Madison to everyone on the river. The house is Greek Revival style, it's one of the best examples in the country. So this was the carriage house, they haven't restored this yet, but um, I'm very excited. Apparently, this east part with the kitchen and the servants' quarters and all that is now preserved and open. This is the massive front door. James F. D. Lanier was born in North Carolina in 1800, grew up in Kentucky, and moved to Madison in 1817. He also studied law at Transylvania University in Lexington. He then was one of the town's earliest lawyers, then became a banker in the 1830s. He was president of the Madison branch of the state bank, which got him a lot of money because Madison was a fast-growing city at that point and one of the largest in the state. These are the double parlors. The ceilings on the first floor are 14 feet high, and there is a sliding door between the parlors. Stair furniture, and that main, they used the main for this top cover, and then they stuffed it with just about everything. He also was a major investor in the railroad, which would connect Madison with Indianapolis. This significantly helped Madison's economy. He hired the local architect, Francis Costigan, to design this incredible home. It was completed in 1844. In 1847, Lanier represented the state in a meeting with its European creditors. Indiana was on the verge of bankruptcy due to overspending on internal improvements like the canal system. Lanier negotiated with them to transfer ownership of most Indiana canals to their bondholders in exchange for a 50% reduction on the value of the bonds. That's a portrait of one of his sons, dressed like a girl, who died young in a carriage accident. In 1862, Governor Oliver P. Morton was in a very bad spot. Because Copperheads controlled the state legislature at the time, they would not provide any funding for the war effort. Morton requested that Lanier loan the state over $1 million to avoid bankruptcy, which he did. This loan was critical to pay off interest of the state debt and to aid in the war effort like providing outfits and weapons. That is the main reason why the state bought the home and turned it into a state memorial back in 1926. the dining room. James Lanier lived here for only seven years. He decided to move to New York City to join an investment firm. He helped found Winslow Lanier and & Company, and he died there in 1881. His youngest son Charles continued that, and he was a close confidant of Pierpont Morgan in the 1870s and 1880s. The firm also provided financing to Thomas Edison's laboratory to develop the electric light. That is a very rare cellarette that would store wine and whiskey. This is one of few in the sarcophagus style. The spiral staircase is amazing, and there was a skylight at the top, but a few months earlier, a storm broke the glass, which had been original to the home and survived all those years. 
so unfortunately it's sported up right now. There is Francis Costigan's signature in the stair railing. That is ivory in the railing, somewhat of a show of wealth. James Lanier's office. James's son, Alexander Lanier, then was the owner of the home starting in 1861, and he did modernize the mansion like adding gas lighting, a coal furnace, as well as bathtubs and a toilet. This is an off-limits, unrestored bathroom they showed me, and I think that is the original toilet. It's really interesting with the skylight. And these are the servants' quarters on the third floor. It's a much tighter area, and the ceilings are not 14 feet high. This is a ghostly handprint found in the original plaster, perhaps of the son who died in the carriage accident. Also, the mansion is haunted. This is the newly restored area. This is the informal dining room or possibly the breakfast room. And this is the winter kitchen. It has beautiful gardens on the riverside. This is a very beautiful and interesting historical home. Um, if you like this, I have other videos here at some of the other houses in Madison and some museums as well. And. Um, Please also subscribe if you like this and uh, thanks for watching.